In this video, we're going to review the map building steps needed to get your courses configured in Live and RaceJoy. The steps we'll, we will cover will be the following. Enable your events, load in your course routes, generate markers, set up your time and configuration, review courses for any proximity and out and back issues, then certify your map. Once you certify all of your course maps, your event is then made live in RaceJoy. So to begin this process, head over to your Run Sign Up Race dashboard and go ahead and select the RaceJoy tab and then select Setup and select the appropriate events to enable. You will only need to enable distinct courses. So in this example, the three events that are needed to be enabled are the Half Marathon, Marathon, and Marathon Relay. The two registration options for corporate teams do not need to be enabled as those course paths are not distinct. Once you have enabled your events, head over to Add Course Map and select Load My Course Map or Adjust Course Map if you've already loaded in your maps. You'll be able to export your maps using map builder tools such as Map My Run or Plotter Route, and you'll load each course route in KML or GPX format. So to load in your KML or GPX file, select Actions, Import Map Path, Browse, and then Find and select the file. At this point, we will now generate markers. So by default, we generate markers every mile for running events and every five miles um, for bike events. So to change um, mile markers generated to five miles, simply change the one to a five. In this, in this example, we're using a running event, so we'll generate markers at every mile. So these markers can be regenerated at any time by selecting actions, recalculate mile positions. This comes in handy if you accidentally move one of the mile markers off the course and you need to move the marker back to the exact GPS locations. So let's move mile six out here for example and we'll hit actions, recalculate mile positions, generate, and we'll now see that mile six gets moved back to the original GPS location. Once markers have been generated, we now need to ensure the location of the markers are correct and match your certification or signage. This also applies to your start and finish markers. As timers, you know exactly where you are placing your timing mats down on the course, so be sure to match the location of where your mats are with what is loaded in RaceJoy. We want to provide a consistent experience to participants so that what they see on the course matches up with what they hear in RaceJoy. We provide a few options to ensure marker locations are accurate, you can use our default map view to see street intersections and be able to zoom in and move mile markers to specific street inter intersections or locations. We also provide you with satellite view. So you can zoom in in satellite view and again, see more specific details. So in this example, if your certification says that mile 13 is around the crosswalk, you can see the crosswalk and you can move mile 13. We also have street view you can access Street View by clicking and dragging on this icon onto the course. And let's say your certification says that mile 13 is located right um, at this manhole cover here. We can go ahead and click and drag on the mile marker within Street View and just make sure that mile 13 is placed correctly right above this manhole cover. If you select the back arrow button, you'll see that mile 13 has been moved to the manhole cover. Once we have our markers generated in the right location, we'll now have to configure those markers so that they fire in the correct sequence. Remember that we use distance to sequence the order at which each marker will fire. So to, head, to do this, head into your timing configuration up here, and you can use the autofill distance, and we'll automatically fill in the distance at each mile marker. Now the finish distance is something that you will have to manually fill in after auto filling in the distance. So go ahead and manually type in the distance of the finish, which is 13.1 miles. Go ahead and save your configuration and you can now see that we automatically uh, set up your configuration in sequential order based on the distance. Be sure to always save your map as you go by clicking on the green Save Map button. This is always uh, good to be doing um, with each step. So next we'll review two types of issues that you'll see in RaceJoy, proximity and out and back. 
First, let's take a look at a proximity issue. You can use the toggle marker radius tool by heading into Actions, Toggle Marker Radius, and we'll use this tool to determine if there is a proximity issue. So when you zoom in, you'll be able to see the read field of each marker. So what we're looking for is a read field for a marker that comes into contact with another part of the course. So if we drag along on the course, let's take a look if we see any issues here. Everything looks good here. Um, and if we come here, we see that the radius field for mile three intersects with another part of the course. So let's see what the runners are doing here. So runners are coming down here. They'll run past mile two. And when they come down here, when they reach this location where it intersects, they're really only at mile 2.8. And they don't hit mile three until they run down and around and back up. So here at mile 2.8, let's take a look here. So when participants get to this location, even though they're at mile 2.8, they're gonna get an alert saying, congratulations, you've reached mile three because that part of the course is within the mile three radius. So what can we do to solve this? Well, we can reduce the radius so that it doesn't include the, inner, the path where participants are on 2.8 here. So if we head into time and configuration, let's take a look at mile three. Now let's drop the radius from the default at 60 meters to 25 meters, which is the lowest we allow for. Go ahead and hit save. And we'll close out of our configuration. And now you can see that the radius or read field has been dropped. And when participants are running down here, when they reach 2.8, they won't get an alert saying they're at mile three until they've come down and around and tr are truly at mile three. So this solves your, your proximity issue. The next type of issue we'll look at is an out and back issue. So let's head to mile eight and nine. So visually, you can already tell that the distance between the, these two markers seem fairly close. But racially can let you know for sure if the distance between the two markers are in fact one mile or something else. If you select onto mile nine, and then select Calculate Distance. Ratio will show that this marker falls onto the path 8.2 miles into the race and also nine miles into the race. Meaning, the first time runners cross the mile nine marker, they're truly only at 8.2 miles and they do not reach mile nine until their second pass when they run past mile nine and back across. This means we have an out and back issue as we cannot fix this by lowering the proximity of mile nine down to zero. So to fix this, we'll need to add an intermediate timing marker. So to add an intermediate timing point, select the pin tool in the top right hand corner. Then you'll wanna click on the location to drop the pin. So let's drop our pin right around here. Then select the hand tool and click onto the drop pin. And we'll go ahead and complete our marker setup by naming the marker. And we'll go ahead and name it mile uh, 8.5. We'll select the layer category. For all intermediate time and locations, you'll set the category to mile marker. Then you'll select an icon. We'll go ahead and select the stopwatch icon. And we'll set a title for this uh, marker here. You can then use the Calculate Distance button to determine the distance location of this marker, which will be needed when setting up the configuration. In and out and back situation, we'll, we'll always use the first pass at this marker. So in this example, we'll use 8.5 as the distance of this marker. If you click onto 8.5, ratio will copy this number into your clipboard. Again, this will be helpful in the next step when we're configuring this marker. So go ahead and click on 8.5. We'll save this marker. So next, let's configure this newly added timing point by heading into your timing configuration. And you can see now we've created a mile 8.5 marker. Go ahead and paste the copy distance of 8.5 into the distance column for, inter for the intermediate timing point and uncheck progress alert and audio pace for this marker. 
Since this marker is used specifically for internal use, we do not want participants and spectators to receive an alert when participants pass through this marker. When you save your configuration, you can now see the sequence registry will send out alerts. We'll go mile 8, then 8.5, then 9. So visually, if we take a look at this, when participants reach mile 9, Racejoy is looking for a pass at 8.5. If participants have not reached 8.5 and gotten a pass at that marker, we will not send an alert for the first mile 9 passing until 8.5 has been passed. The last step you'll want to do is to certify your map by selecting the Certify Map button, then select Confirm. Once you certify all of your course maps, your event will then be live in Racejoy. So to recap the map building process, you'll enable your race, upload and adjust your course maps, generate your markers, set up your time and configuration, review for proximity and out and back issues, then certify your maps. Now this is important to note that you will need to enable your race for Racejoy at least five or more days before the race date. This will give you time to market Racejoy to participants and allow participants to download and create their profiles on Racejoy. This also helps increase Racejoy usage on race day.